Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be demonstrating a four-dimensional array uh, showing both the code and a visual using the Array Visualizer in Visual Studio 2015. Currently, what we've got is from the previous video, we created a, four, a 3D array, but now we'll create a 4D array. It's going to stay as a double. I'll rename it to 4D. So let's just use 4D, 4D. Everything is changed to the proper naming. Now, what we currently have is a 3D array. And feel free to watch the previous video, um, C sharp 18, if you wanted to know how this one worked. But to add an, another dimension, we just need to add a comma when we are declaring our array. So currently, this is a four dimensional array, but we need to specify the sizes. So for the, uh, we've currently got three blocks, so one, two, and then three. And initially, I'm just going to place this all within one array. So the outer array, the one that we created, we can refer to that as a box. So with, with one, one array as the box um, that contains three blocks of four rows and four columns. Okay, so we refer to the block as also an array. Okay, so we need to actually do this. So initially, everything goes inside another array. So let's just copy all that code and paste it in here. Now let's just um, sort of indent it properly. Okay, so what we basically have at this point uh, is, and we can call this box one. Okay, so that's our first box. Uh, box one or array. Sorry, let me type it properly, array one. Okay, uh, now let's see what this what will work as. So let's just first run it in console and see. Uh, well, okay, we've got issues. Okay, I forgot one thing though, is when we're looping through the array, we actually also need to add that side as well. So get the length of box, uh, length of box block. And so our first one would be the box. And we get that through zero. Now this would be one, that would be two, this would be th three. And then we need another outer loop so that we can navigate through the array, the four dimensional array. So we've explained in the two-dimensional array video, these two loops. In the previous video of the three dimension, we've explained that loop, and now we're in the outer loop. So that would be the box counter. That would be box counter, box counter, and box length, depending on how many boxes. And we need to add that dimension as well. So yeah, now we can run it. All right. so really the output so this is our f this whole thing is a box the box contains three blocks so that's block one this is block two and this is block three and each block has three rows so in the first block that's our first row that's our second sorry that's our second row that's our third row and that's our fourth and each row contains four columns that's the first column so this this whole thing is a column that's a second column, that's a third column, and that's a fourth column. All right, let's see what this looks like in the in the debug mode. So after we are, we know for sure that the, um, we know for sure that the array has been initialized. Let's set a breakpoint there, and let's run this in, in debug mode. We want the program to pause at that stage, and this is why the output was displayed. We know that the array has been initialized, but then the program pauses at that point waiting uh, for any further debugging steps that we need to take. So from the debug mode, click on window, then go to array visualizer, then click on the array, and then we'll get a visual. 
So that's just one uh, one box with three sides. Each side has got four rows and four columns. Let's add another. So it doesn't really show a difference to what we've done to the previous video. That's because we've only got one box. But what happens if we add another box? So another box and um, make them two. Now what I'm going to do is replicate this. So after this box, put a comma and now you can add another one. So that would be our second box or an entire array. And everything here kind of remains, but we've stopped it. So we can change these values, but I won't um, just for simplicity uh, reasons. Now the, the, the loop remains the same because these sizes are dynamically, uh, you know, we, we're getting the size of the array based on whatever we've put in. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's stop the debugger. Let's play this again. And so now we've got that's side one. That's box one, sorry. And that's box two. Let's see this in a visual. Oh, I need to run it again because I kind of closed it without meaning to do that. And click on array visualizer. Click on the array. And now we've got box one and box two. And we can add a third box. So let's say um, three boxes. So basically that. I uh, don't think I've selected it correctly. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So now what we do is we will add the outer one. So yeah, just making sure I'm in the right place. Now we'll add the last box and we'll call this box three. So that's that's what it is. Let's stop the debugger. Let's run it again in debug mode. Let's have a look at our console. So that's the first box of arrays and second and our third. And let's view this in the visualizer. And click on the array. Now we get three of these. So I hope this helps you understand four dimensional arrays. So it's basically um, an array that has a 3D array. So that's a four dimensional array. It's an array that has a three dimensional array. Now the three dimensional array itself has two dimensional arrays and the two dimensional array is also got one array within itself. And so the more you create the the more individual 3D arrays will have. I hope that helped you and I'll see you in the next video.